Everyday America faces a new calamity, poverty, racism, gun violence, and countless others. Many are not aware they had me. Some refuse to acknowledge them all together, and others simply don't have the resources to have their voice heard. Awareness is a major part of having these issues dealt with. Taking on this vital challenge is a team behind a matter of interpretation, Americans in Crisis. Good afternoon. This is Claudette Milner, host of A Matter of Interpretation and Americans in Crisis. Today you have the opportunity to sit in on a meeting of my team. I'd like for my team members to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Casey. I'm 15 and I go to DuPont Manual High School in Kentucky. Hi, my name is Cindy Tucker. I go to Spalding University and I'm 19 years old. Hi, my name is Alexandria Brown. I'm a junior at DuPont Manual High School and I am 16. Hi, I am Maureen Mosby. I am a senior at Jefferson Town High School and I am very passionate about writing. This is a typical day for a matter of interpretation meeting. Uh, we have on the set with us, we have Casey who is our teen host and we have Sydney Tucker, also a teen host. We've got Alexandria Brown, Facebook, uh, production and camera and we've got Maureen Mosby who is our lead camera person. You saw her on duo. Frequently sometimes they just can't make it and so we make an opportunity by duoing them into the meeting. Uh, the first thing we do is discuss what we're going to do on the radio because we are on the radio on 104.7 1350 WLOU every Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Sydney has week three. Hi, my name is Sydney Tucker. I go to Spalding University and I'm 19 years old. I'm a teen host for Matter of Interpretation, Americans in Crisis, and Matter of Interpretation. And being a host has been a really unique, interesting, and awesome experience. To interview people with such diversity, with so many opinions and different varieties of backgrounds is so amazing. And one of my favorite shows that I've done was Election of 2020 and you're going to get a little sneak peek. But for why I did that show is because election of 2020 is for everyone, not just adults. Some adults might say, hey, you know, election is for the big, the big adults, but that's not true. So I feel like that you should definitely be involved, active, and engaged to, in our community and what we should do with our community. So uh, there's a brief clip. Moving on, so what is your political view? I am a Democrat. Okay. And there are a ton of candidates, like 25, um, but some, of course, will drop out um, due to their 1% um, of voting and everything. Mm -hmm. So we're let, I'm going to talk about the four strongest uh, Democrats um, that are, you know, of course, race, along with uh, two Republicans, which is Trump and uh, Bill. Oh, so. <laughs> But do you feel that the four strong, since there are four strong Democrats, that um, it will affect and will actually hurt the Democratic Party? I mean, like, um, it will definitely divide us because we'll have to choose out of, like, the, like a lot of people and they all have different um, views that they're bringing and everything like that. So I guess it depends on your morals and what you actually believe in and what you feel like is an issue and how, and if you like the way they plan on solving it. And it's another thing when they're saying, what they're saying like, oh, because they're, of course they'll say anything when they wanna like become a president. Yeah. But. Pretty big position. Literally, <laughs> yeah, so they'll say anything. I got my start on WIG and TV networks in Detroit, uh, talking about issues that we, face every day, DACA, sex crimes, um, voting rights, various issues. I started, I think, in 2003. I'm also an author of now 10 books and a series for uh, young adults called The Children of Plates, a series, and then a series of small books. When I went to radio, God placed in my heart to get a teen host. And it wasn't easy. I looked at it, I looked. I was looking for something special. I was looking for someone that was diligent and hardworking. And I met Sydney Tucker. And she has blossomed from a young person to a 
mature young adult. Why did I start the group? I started the group because I had a passion for serving and I also have a passion for youth. I write for juveniles, juveniles and juvenile fiction. I mentor juveniles. I teach vacation Bible school. I teach Sunday school. I, I want young people to be mentored in a society where we seldom and always, in most cases, just look past them, look past the attributes that they can contribute to society. The documentary series I started so that it could show that African American and Caucasian host could not only show and display professionalism, but they could also research the tar topics the topics that teens are interested in, the topics that they want to talk about but nobody gives them a voice. It has been my desire to give them a voice. And during this last six to seven months since we started filming Americans in Crisis, we have filmed everything from rights, civil rights, to election 2020 and what teens are thinking uh, mental health in the black community and one of my favorite videos was with Dr. Stephen Niffley Jr. as we discussed mental health, the stigmatization of mental health in the African American community. I invite you to watch the short preview uh, from this docu-series. Enjoy and I look forward to speaking with you soon. This is Claudette Bilner, host of Americans in Crisis. Uh, so uh, we uh, experience uh, PTSD differently uh, from other types of folks uh, because we have the compounding issue of our racial background. So uh, when we think about what PTSD is, so PTSD is post-traumatic stress uh, disorder. Uh, it usually refers to the experience of some sort of trauma like a car accident or seeing some sort of trauma, like see someone hurt or someone on those lines, and then you start to feel uh, unsafe about it. And so then you start to engage in behaviors to make sure that you feel safe again. And then your brain kind of goes through this process of wanting to process the event. And so you will think about the trauma a lot. You will try not to think about the trauma a lot. There will be nightmares. There will be all types of things that will happen. The challenge for black people is that we are always living in a constant state of trauma anyhow because of the color of our skin. So there's been a trauma that's been passed down through the generations that's been associated more with racism and discrimination uh, that is different from traditional trauma. So when you experience trauma as a black person, uh, you're experiencing that car accident and the daily experience of racism and discrimination. And that's much different for us compared to other people. Hi, I'm Casey and I'm a sophomore at DuPont Manual High School in Kentucky and I'm 15. I'm a teen host on A Matter of Interpretation and I'm fairly new but my experience of being a teen host has been amazing. Like, I get to talk about issues that I think are important and I get to spread awareness about different things that I care about and I feel that need to be talked about. And just being able to open the lens of what people consider like controversial or not to be talked about. I get to talk about it and I get to bring on people who are experienced with the topic or the way that something affects them and figure out how we can help other people who are watching or listening with those issues. So an example of that would be I did a show about a girl who's 16 and she has an eating disorder. And she came on and she talked about her diagnosis and different things that she's gone through and symptoms and ways to recognize an eating disorder. And the way that that can just help parents identify if like their kid has an eating disorder or needs help with something or the way that you and yourself can cope with an eating disorder or figure out like how to get help I just think is so important and we talk about that with so many different topics 
And so here's a little sneak peek of my show about eating disorders with Liz. And with you not noticing the symptoms, what are the different symptoms that your mom did notice that made her push? So I remember her telling me the first time that she felt like that's really not okay was um, last year, um, so I play volleyball and we were doing a fundraiser for the volleyball team. We were cleaning up Churchill Downs afterwards. And the night before I spent the night with my best friend and I knew that before I went to Churchill Downs, me and my mom were gonna get Chick-fil-A. She had told me that. So I like didn't eat until um, I got back with my mom, which was afternoon, like five o'clock, because I didn't want to be too full for Chick-fil-A, which seems like a reasonable thing, but I, um, I was restricting. I told myself I couldn't eat before the Chick-fil-A because I couldn't eat that much. I told myself I couldn't eat that much. Um, I truly believe that I physically couldn't eat that much. Like, I didn't have a big enough stomach. <laughs> but um, she noticed that I made excuses about not eating. And um, I thought they were genuine things that I was feeling like I really wasn't hungry. But um, they were deciding not to eat even though like just because I was gonna eat later, like you're supposed to eat three meals a day. And um, just that I was making excuses about it and that I didn't, I didn't have the energy. I didn't have the same energy anymore. The most important thing I want you to know about this team is that they all are exemplary students. They each have their own attributes. Alexandra is an MST student at Manuel DuPont. She had a 31 on the ACT. Um, we also have Maureen Mosby that just got accepted into the University of Cincinnati and it has a four plus at grade point average. Sydney Tucker, now a freshman at Spalding University, also doing track and speaking side by side with the mayor on issues that are current and relevant to teens, like Julie. So each member of my team, including Casey, who is my youngest uh, team member and newest team member, she is a journalism major and she also carries a high GPA and she runs track. These students interview their guests before coming on the show. They also pick their topics and research their topics. They are learning to be citizens of merit throughout the state of Kentucky and, and of course throughout the United States. I am so proud to be a mentor for this team. Writing is my most favorite thing ever. I have been writing since I was about five. I love telling stories. I love make, coming up with stories, coming up with all these different kinds of worlds and characters. That is the mo That was one of the most favorite things that I love doing. Um, I am very passionate about becoming a writer later in my future. I want to write for books, I want to write for TV, I want to write for movies. I want to do all of it. I want to write as much as I can. And I am pursuing that dream by being accepted into the University of Cincinnati under their English Creative Writing Program, which is something that I am heavily anticipating doing because I want to learn how to become a better writer in my future so that I may tell stories that people want to hear and people will be excited about in the future. And I just, I would, I love writing. Writing is my most favorite thing to do. Um, this, what I primarily do on a matter of interpretation, Americans in Crisis, is I am the primary camera person. I work the camera, I direct people behind the camera, I am the camera person. Um, I also work with the set a little bit, set is a little bit of part of what I do, but mainly my main focus is the camera, and I love doing the camera thing because one, it's behind the camera and I don't have to be in front of the camera. I personally don't like being in front of the camera. But the way, being behind the camera, you kind of get to see a different perspective of the way people tell their stories, the stories that they're passionate about. You get to watch their facial expressions. You get to watch how they get excited and very, and you know, very 
excited, you know, excited about their their passion, what they feel should be told in the world, and I think that's just something very special to see in person to have them be so excited about what they love doing and what they're passionate about telling about the world. Um, my favorite show that we have done so far is with Tiffany Robinson where she introduced six of the books that she had written and she talked about the process of becoming self-published because she realized that getting a publisher wasn't working for her and that the kind of drawbacks that it had and that really spoke to me because you know as a writer it's important to learn these kind of things and you know learn the process of what it takes to become a successful writer and get out into the world and get just the stories that you you've worked so hard on get out to the people that you want to see see them read and I just I really enjoyed that segment and it's re it was really in in for you know information large with that show here is a clip of that show that you were about to see so in Zoe's sidewalk um, it starts off that Zoe is waiting for her grandmother to come home from the hospital so her grandmother has had a heart attack and when she gets home her family explains to Zoe and her brother this is her and her brother on the cover that um, her grandmother will have to have therapy uh, and they call it her homework which she doesn't understand but then she realizes that her grandmother needs exercise to recover but in their neighborhood where they live they don't have any sidewalks and Zoe's really excited because she loves her grandmother so they're very very close and she wants to take her out walking in the neighborhood but her mother's like no you can't we're gonna have to wait there's only certain times you'll be able to do that and Zoe's very upset about it and she's of course concerned about her grandmother and wants to make sure she's going to get better and so she's very dejected about that about not having the opportunity to walk with freedom anytime she wants to in her neighborhood and the next day she goes to school and there's a special project she gets there and they actually have a photo voice project coming so a new teacher comes and explains you can use this camera to take pictures of things you want to change in your neighborhood so of course Zoe gets the idea that maybe she can change the situation about the sidewalks and she gets the camera, takes it home, and then she begins uh, taking photos and hopefully um, eventually getting a sidewalk. We won't tell the ending of the book, but you can imagine what might happen. Uh, but here's a picture of Zoe and her brother at the park, which Zoe realizes is a perfect place for her and her grandmother to walk, but they can't get there from their home because there's not a sidewalk linking. So it's Zoe's journey to realizing something that's upsetting and something she wants to change in life that she actually has the power to make that change and that's one thing I really value imparting to children um, I know when my kids were little they would come home and say mom we shouldn't be eating this or mom this is a better way to do this or we should be recycling or whatever it is and a lot of times the things they brought home from school imparted a change in our home and our family mm -hmm. and that's the same thing that Zoe does she realizes and I want kids anywhere and everywhere to realize they have the power to make changes in their communities, in their families. Even though they are kids, um, they held a lot of power and I want them to recognize that. Hi, my name is Alexandria Brown. I'm a junior at DuPont Manual High School and I am 16. And I am on the production crew. Um, I'm the Facebook technician for a matter of interpretation and I'm the um, assistant camera person. Um, my experience with being behind the camera is that I get to see all the guests and like actually understand our hosts and like get to know them a little bit better and like see the interactions between the host and the guests and see how everyone just like gets along and like talks about the issues that they're going to discuss a little bit further and a good example of that would be um, women teen mental health um, the show about um, talking about mental health in women and teens especially. Um, I loved being behind that because I love to like see what was happening in the mind of a teen woman dealing with mental health and like seeing the relationship between the guests and the host and like being able to like hear from like personal experience and like hearing about what the guests actually like experienced and like saw through other women. So here's a clip of that video for you to watch. Good afternoon. This is Claudette Milner, host of A Matter of Interpretation, Americans in Crisis. Uh, today I have a guest, uh, Anna Williams, and we're going to talk about teen women and mental health. Uh, we talked earlier about teen suicide 
And now we just want to go into the signs of mental health, how we deal with it, the options and solutions. We're going to stick to uh, teens and we're going to stick to girls because we have Dr. Nifley coming on that's going to talk about boys. Of course, we need to open up in prayer. Most gracious Father, we come to you knowing that you are the Almighty. We trust you, dear God, in heaven to lead me and guide me. We trust the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Anna, I, we talked a few minutes ago. Of course, you've been on the radio show on 104.7. And I want to start with just a little bit of background. Uh, Anna is a Louisville native. Um, she has her MSW and also her BA in psychology uh, from Spalding University. She's a certified social worker and she uh, works with um, pregnant and planning women outpatient services. Um, I want you to tell us a little bit about your background, your personal background, and how this has affected your organization and your working with girls and, and your work. So um, I provide therapy services and I work with girls and women and what I notice is um, I work in substance abuse and so a lot of the women are dealing with childhood issues that have occurred which have led them to substance use disorders and so where I work at is Centerstone, Kentucky and um, a lot of trauma has occurred. Um, a lot of issues as far as witnessing domestic violence, other substance abuse issues that have came up in the family as well. Um, it's interesting to see that if people would have stepped in earlier on, there could have been some prevention measures that occurred. Um, I've been working with women for the past five years um, and a lot of domestic violence has occurred. Um, sexual abuse, physical abuse, and a lot of depression and anxiety. It has been a hot topic the last few years. Um, and schools are, are starting to identify certain issues. Um, homes are starting to identify certain issues. But before, as you know, during the period that I grew up, um, and you know, I was the perfect student, and I, I think nobody knew that I was a perfect student because there was such craziness going home, home domestic violence, uh, various, you know, just alcoholism, just so many things going on in the home that you come to school, it's the refuge, yeah. and so you put on the face. And I remember having a first uh, communication in college, and it, there were a lot of women that we were sitting around, we were, you know, thought we were women, and we were sitting around talking, and it was like a game. Well, what was going on in your household? Well, honey, you haven't seen anything because my dad was smacking my mama around, and you finally, it finally dawned on you that you weren't alone. Mm -hmm. But all during high school, all during middle school, you are alone because nobody dared to talk about it. And so, because what happened in the household stayed in the household. Yeah. And so now, with the Me Too movement, with so many things going on, people coming out, there, there's a sense. But all of that is fabricated. And not to say that these women, it didn't happen. But what I am saying that is because it's television, because these are, are women with, that are highly educated and, and can articulate themselves, everybody else. It's just lost. Everybody else is not mentioned. So you're working with a, a group of people who basically for society are unknown. Yeah. And so there are so many young girls in schools that are unknown. So how do we, how do we educate our system? How do we get more counselors in? How do we do referrals. I asked you three questions in one and take any one of them at a time. Oh man, that's, that's a great question. Um, I know that with our school system, they're working hard to be more trauma-informed 
and they're wanting to bring preventive preventative measures as far as hiring more mental health counselors, but that's going to be so overwhelming for one person to take on a whole school and address all these children's needs. This has been Americans in Crisis and Matter Interpretation with your teen host, Sydney Tucker. And this is Claudette Milner, host of A Matter of Interpretation. With our efforts in God's grace, this has been A Matter of Interpretation, Americans in Crisis.